Hey, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2001 comedy film Saving Some Silverman. So uh, Dennis Dugan, I think, is the director of this. He's done a lot of like Adam Sandler, Happy Madison projects. This is a comedy film, right? Um, Jason Biggs is in this. Steven Zahn, Jack Black, Amanda Peet is in this. So what's interesting is Jason, Steve, and Jack play childhood best friends, right? And in real life, and I had to look this up because I was like, Jason Biggs is too young to be a childhood best friend of Steven Zahn. I know. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know how old Jack Black is. But then I looked it up. So Steven Zahn is born in 67. Jack Black is 69. And then Jason Biggs is born in 78. So they're 10 years older than him in real life, but they're playing childhood best friends throughout the years, you know, growing up together, still best friends in high school and still best friends outside of high school as they're adults in the real world. So it's the power of movie magic, right? Because they all look around the same age, but they're not the same age because Jason's 10 years younger than them. Wild, bro. Wild knowing this fun fact. Steve is an incredible actor, especially with his uh, physical comedy, Jack Black as well. And to see Steve in every project he does, does his Steve scream? I don't know how else to explain it. He just goes bug-eyed and he just goes wild and he starts screaming and very pronouncedly, pronouncedly, profoundly enunciates certain words as he's screaming. And it's just Steven Zahn's character in every single project. I've seen uh, him as Frank Heffley in the Wimpy Kid films the most. Those are the most Steve Zahn projects I've seen um, of him. But I've seen countless other Steven Zahn projects. He's, a, he's an awesome he's an awesome talent. I'm assuming he's an awesome guy. And it's just funny watching him, again, playing somebody in the same... He's, the, he's just typecast. He's the same role in every single thing, which is very entertaining. So what I find interesting about this film is that this would never be made now. Never. Because it's hysterical. But if you change the music... And we've talked about this. Score is very important. Musical score is very important. If you change the music, this is this would be a horror film. And why I say this is that we're supposed to be laughing while these things are happening. But the things that are happening involve kidnapping and abduction and force feeding of food and a jailbreak and convincing your friend that their fiance is dead and... and which is a weird plot, by the way, because there was never a funeral. And then Jason's character then goes back into, you know, dating the high school friend, which is interesting. But so certain plot flaws. But then also you have their coach who are uh, their high school football coach who's still in contact with them all those years later, who ends up wind up marrying JD at the end when there's the vast, you know, marriage uh, coming about. It takes place in Washington. So there's three different multiple weddings at the end. At a Neil Diamond concert, you have uh, Steve's character marrying Amanda Peet's character, despite the fact that he kidnapped her. Problematic. Then you have Jason's character marrying the childhood best friend's character, who's the actress's name, I don't remember. But then Jack Black's character realizes he's gay throughout the film and then winds up marrying their high school coach. It's just so problematic in regards to the whole... Um, carrying over of things that were funny then shouldn't be funny now or we're not supposed to laugh at things that used to be fun i don't know how to i don't know how to word it but this kind of project would not be made now because it's super problematic i think it's because and i i, I just said this that if the score was changed into a horror setting this would have been a full abduction film stockholm syndrome all of that aspect uh the the marrying of the coach at the end that was a weird a weird, was the groundwork being laid? No, obviously, because the two of them barely spoke for quite some time. And it was just a weird throw in of like, oh, I'm gay. Oh, you're gay. So am I. Let's get married. It was just a very strange, very strange, not a grooming aspect. Strange. It was, a, it was a, it was a strange, why the hell is there no other gay character then introduced to marry JD? Very weird. Um, I also liked that I, I just I just like that Neil Diamond played himself in this. It's just such a wild film. It's wild, and I have to appreciate the fact that this is a timepiece film because this is 2001. Granted, it was filmed in 2000. 
came out in 2001, would never be made now. Never. Never, never, never. 20 years later, we would never have a film like this. But what's strange is that I laugh at this because certain conversations, certain moments are absolutely hysterical. So it's a weird conflicting feeling because I know I'm not supposed to laugh now that we're in present PC politically correctedness aspects and the fact that we've had countless documentaries and films about abductions and kidnapping and things like that. So we know it's a serious topic that we're not supposed to laugh at, but why the hell am I still laughing at this film from 2001 where that is the main sub where that is the main plot point i'm going to steal your fiance and kidnap her and keep her chained in our garage to convince you that then she's then dead oh there's grave robbing in this they literally steal a corpse from a coffin put her in the car throw the car off a cliff car explodes so they they incinerate a body it, it's just it's so wild i think that's why it's hysterical because it's so far-fetched and wildly hysterical that how the hell would this be a thing that there's so many different ground when he when he tranks her in the middle of the road when 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 uh steve's character tranks her in the middle of the road amanda's character and whose name is judith when he tra <laughs> tranks judith and puts a tarp over her and two police officers come and he's like oh you know don't worry i i got the i got the creature that was you know causing chaos because he's like a trapper right an exterminator and they're like yeah good 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 job no like they would check so just it's just wild to think that this was normal in two, 20 years ago compared to now where they, this would never be a thing it would never certain plot points would not have happened certain conversations would not have happened certain lack of fighting your kidnapper would not have happened it's just it's wild and i think that's why i find it hysterical still in a should i not find it hysterical should i find it hysterical is because it's so wild it's just it's so far-fetched and so wild that you can't help but laugh everybody does a great job it's just such a great physical comedic kind of film and it's then questioning am i going to join the nunnery am i going to stay with my high school boyfriend it's just wild 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 I love this film, despite how problematic and wild it actually is when you actually look at it. It's wild. It's so far-fetched. This would be a great book, though, too, now that I'm talking about it. But on the flip side, this would be a great horror film. This would be a great psychological thriller horror film. Bro, wild. Saving Silverman, 2001 comedy film, wild. On to the next review. Jamalo.